Do you struggle with painful or embarrassing memories that play on your mind and affect your confidence? Most of us do. But what if I told you that your brain is already rewriting your past experiences, whether you realise it or not, and that you can use that same process to heal and build self-connection instead? The truth is that memory is much more flexible than it might seem. Even our most crystal clear recollections, like the memories we have of big events in our lives or international disasters, otherwise known as flashbulb memories, are not set in stone. In 1986, researchers interviewed people the day after the explosion of the Challenger Space Shuttle. Details recorded included how the interviewees heard the news, how they felt about it, and what they'd been doing at the moment they learned of the disaster. However, when those same people were interviewed again two and a half years later, a quarter of them had misremembered every single detail, and not a single person told consistent stories in the two interviews. Now, I don't know about you, but that fact blew my mind. The first thing I did was call my mum to say, hey, do you remember when we heard the news in September 2001? Do you remember me coming out into the garden and telling you what had happened? No, she replied, I was ironing when I heard about that news. Damn it. Here's the thing, this may not only be true of flashbulb memories. Some groundbreaking studies made towards the end of the 20th century have indicated that memory is malleable by nature and in a constant state of change. Initially, the understanding was that once a memory had passed through the temporary archives, our original record of that event would be preserved as a permanent physical imprint in the neocortex, the outer part of the brain. Imagine a family photo album collecting dust in the attic. The thinking was that memories were like photos in that album. Each time we decided to bring it down and reminisce, the photos would look the same, if a little faded. However, reconsolidation theory, which resulted from a neuroscience study conducted in 2000, suggested that the very act of recalling a memory renders it unstable, and that this instability means that memories can be updated automatically to accommodate new information. So, rather than flicking through an old photo album, the act of recollection appears to be more like retrieving image files from a computer hard drive, editing them in Photoshop, and then saving them over the originals. As frightening as this might seem at first, this discovery could be wonderful news for people with mental health issues such as anxiety, phobias, and post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Because it means that rather than just coping with the stress triggered by reminders of past trauma, those traumatic imprints themselves could be available for a rewrite. However, memory reconsolidation needn't only benefit those affected by serious upheaval. We don't have to be standing in the middle of a road looking at an oncoming bus to experience fear. Human beings can learn to be afraid of pretty much anything. If reconsolidation theory holds true, then we should be able to unlearn our necessary fears by reconsolidating some useful and positive information into our formative memories. I use techniques to help with memory reconsolidation with my clients back when I was practicing as a therapist. And believe me, they can be transformative. Because of their power, we of course integrated these processes into Betwixt. But you can also do this work for yourself without our app or therapy by journaling about or simply thinking about a past experience that causes you problems. This could be something that replays in your mind keeping you awake at night, something you believe could lie at the root of a mild phobia or aversion, or anything that makes you feel bad about yourself, such as a failed exam, shameful mistake, or particularly nasty insult. Before I tell you how to do this, please bear in mind that journaling about trauma or other deeply emotional experiences can be challenging. If you want to address something but don't feel safe to do it on your own, please seek the help of a trained professional. As long as you do feel comfortable, however, here's how to use journaling to begin the work of memory reframing in four simple steps. Step one, identify a memory to work on. As mentioned, I suggest you keep this manageable, especially for your first session. Pick something like a moment of mild embarrassment or a minor failure. Once you have it, consider the message this memory conveys. Why is this a negative memory for you? What does it make you feel or believe about yourself or about the world around you? Negative memories bear negative messages. They narrate stories of pain and failure in our minds. Stories such as, I'm a bad person, I'm stupid, or other people are dangerous. The point of memory reframing is to start telling better, more productive, realistic, and self-accepting stories. So don't dwell on the negative message, just get a sense of it before moving on. The next step is to self-distance. In order to rewrite an old memory, you need to avoid getting drawn back into the thoughts and feelings of that time, because if you do that, you may simply re-experience the event rather than reframe it. There are many ways to self-distance, and I've made videos about the variations before, so here I'm just going to share my favourite simple method. Imagine you can view your memory as if through the eyes of an objective, preferably compassionate or wise, observer. 
To do this, you must step out of the first person perspective. Step out of your body and mind and assume the position of someone else. If you don't like the idea of a stranger viewing your past self, you could see it through the eyes of a loved one or your future self or even a beloved pet or toy. The most important thing is that you step out of your old self and see the situation afresh. Once you've done that, journal about the event from this angle. Or if you're doing this in your head, you can use your inner monologue here. I will say though that I think it's easier on paper. Start by describing in simple terms what's happening. Then go into more detail about what you can see your remembered self thinking, feeling and doing in response to the event. Write about the conclusions your remembered self is coming to as a result of this experience and consider these in a more objective way. A note. If your memory involves another person's actions, you can also view them from this objective angle, but I'd avoid spending too much time thinking about them. And I definitely caution against describing their actions, thoughts or feelings in detail because this might just draw you back into the original story. Now, once you feel you've covered this distance perspective, you can move on to the final step, which is to condense the wisdom and compassion of this new take into one simple healing message. This message is obviously a counter for the negative message you landed on in step one. It's a better story to tell. There are no rules for how this message should go, but you want it to capture the essence of your reframe. And it will likely be most effective when it comes from a place of love and acceptance rather than logic alone. For example, if you're focusing on an argument with an ex in which they said something that made you feel worthless, that's the original story, your reframed message might sound something like this. Those old words say more about your ex than you. You are valuable and important regardless of their pain. Notice that this message is in the second person. I said you are valuable, not I am valuable. And you should do the same with your message. Speak to your past self, not as them. This will keep you in a self-distance position. That's it really. Once you have this better story, all that's left to do is to program it in, by which I basically mean revisit it repeatedly until it starts to feel true. Write it down, stick it in a diary alarm or reminder on your phone, say it to yourself last thing at night so it's on your mind as you sleep. And most importantly, see if you can start acting as if it's true before it starts to feel that way. Ultimately, you are in charge of the stories you tell about yourself. It can take a little time and effort to rewrite your most limiting narratives, but it is entirely possible. I wish you the very best of luck.